Hey guys, I'm just sitting in my car out front of the Art Gallery of Ballarat today. I'm about to pop in to see my exhibition, An Ornamental Education, and I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. So let's go. The Art Gallery of Ballarat was founded in 1884 and is the oldest and largest regional art gallery in Australia. It's housed in a beautiful, heritage-listed, purpose-built art gallery building opened in 1890. From 1891 to 1907, it also operated its own school of art, and the presence of university art schools in Ballarat has meant that art teachers and students continue to make use of the collection, as I have done for this exhibition. The Backspace Gallery celebrates the arts in the region through a vibrant and much-loved program. It provides early career artists an opportunity to exhibit in a professionally supported gallery and it's been an incredible honour to have the opportunity to mount a solo exhibition here. The exhibition title An Ornamental Education draws on the history of botanical art, particularly practised by female artists of the 19th century. The artist that I researched most extensively for this exhibition was Louisa Ann Meredith, who you see depicted in this painting here. She was born in England in 1812 and emigrated to Australia in 1839, settling in Tasmania in 1840. She was a prolific writer, poet and painter and published many books in her lifetime. I was lucky enough to be able to go into the archives at the Art Gallery with curator Julie McLaren and view firsthand some of the beautiful works on paper held there. This triggered an intense research phase and immense inspiration for exploring the history of botanical painting through my own art. You see here how I have used the imagery Louisa Ann painted of Tasmanian laurel for her book Bush Friends in Tasmania in the portrait that I painted of her seated outside her home in Tasmania. Her books and the art that she created for them became the anchor point of this exhibition. This research also led me to reflect more deeply on the impact of European colonisation on the gardens and landscape we live in today. This painting of blossoms in front of a brick Victorian house in my local neighbourhood, titled The Past is Present, reflects on the enduring consequences of colonialism that enabled the establishment of towns such as Ballarat that look like they were lifted out of England. I love the beauty of my town, I love its Victorian ambience and the English style gardens that are in abundance here. I even live in a house built in the 1860s. But there is a shadow that will always remain, one that reminds us of what was here before the impact of colonisation on this land of the Wadawurrung people. A land of very different flora, cared for by First Nations people for millennia. It is in that uncomfortable awareness that I bring forward this story of early female colonial artists and the art that they made, in recognition of the layering of Indigenous and European cultures that create the landscape that I live in today. This grouping of 25 flower portraits is titled An Ornamental Education. During the 18th and 19th century, Girls of the middle and upper classes in England were given what was commonly referred to as an ornamental education. This typically included ladylike accomplishments of drawing, dancing, fancy work, recitation, romance languages and taste in dress. Female artists of this time were further limited to three gendered genres deemed appropriate for women to practice miniature portrait painting, flower painting, and picturesque landscape painting. Louisa Ann Meredith practiced all three. You can see a silhouette of her in the center of the arrangement. Before the invention of photography, creating cut silhouettes of the profile was a common way to capture a portrait. Each flower in this series was collected from my own garden, those of my friends and family, or in my local neighborhood. I wrote poetry and prose by Louisa Ann Meredith with a dip pen on the linen supports for these paintings before painting the flower. This deep immersion in Louisa's words 
many of which captured her deep love of nature, was the perfect backdrop to give myself the experience of an ornamental education in the painting of flowers. Throughout the process of creating work for this exhibition, I've also reflected on the great love of gardening in my hometown of Ballarat through a deep dive into our internationally famous Begonia Festival. Founded in 1853, the Ballarat Begonia Festival is a showcase for the largest and rarest collection of begonias in the Southern Hemisphere. It's unusual that Ballarat chose to celebrate a plant which is not native to Australia and is generally found in tropical climates of South America, Africa and Southern Asia. The magnificent display in the conservatory, which you can see here in this painting, is as much impactful as it is a reminder that these plants, along with many other introduced species, require carefully controlled conditions to thrive. In many of these works, I've combined the use of collage and painting to explore the gorgeous pattern, texture and variety to be found in these plants. The colour and abstracted style of these works also evoke the mid-century modern roots of the festival. In 19th century England and Australia, women were limited in the ways that they could participate in the science of botany. They were presented with an edited version of the science that excluded the sexual classification of plants deemed unseemly for women. This spawned the writing and publication of gardening and botany books, often written by women for women. It also led to new ways of depicting bouquets of botanicals that represented a new genre in botanical illustration quite different to those that appeared in the scientific botanical publications. These four paintings of bouquets of flowers from my own environment are a nod to that much overlooked contribution to the genre of botanical art. Collecting and illustrating bouquets of flowers was one of the important ways colonial women forged a connection with their new and unfamiliar home and became an important way for women to find their place within it. Botany was at the height of popularity in Australia in the decades that followed European colonisation. Herbariums, books which contain press botanicals attached to sheets of paper, were assembled to record and categorise new discoveries of plants. Many early colonial female artists had made significant contributions to the field through their collecting, including Louisa Ann Meredith. Over 200 women regularly sent their samples to Baron Ferdinand von Müller, government-appointed botanist for the colony of Victoria in 1852, and later director of the Royal Botanic Gardens in Melbourne. He also founded the National Herbarium of Victoria. He named many Australian plants, including several that he dedicated to these women. I had the honour of viewing one of von Mueller's herbariums held in the collection of the Mechanics Institute in Ballarat that has been recently restored and inspired this series. The circular paintings contain collaged silhouettes of plants cut from monoprints that reflect the flattening process that happened in the herbarium construction. These circles also evoke the form of embroidery hoops, so familiar to all women who spent significant hours stitching. 
and also the linen cloth that was used in the substrates for this entire exhibition that nods to the coarsely woven cloth that would have been commonly used in these colonial times. Before I wrap up this exhibition tour, I wanted to share with you a beautiful speech that was given by my dear friend and accomplished artist, Dr. Louise Ann King, at the opening celebration for my exhibition, which happened on the evening of the 8th of March, 2024, which also happened to be International Women's Day. Louise Ann eloquently shares about her perspective on my exhibition and also the broader significance of the women that I celebrate with this body of work. Remaining artworks are available for purchase on my website, susannethercote.com, along with a special limited edition 1,000-piece jigsaw puzzle that was produced for the occasion. You can also find the puzzle in the gallery shop. I'd also like to formally thank the Art Gallery of Ballarat and the generosity of curator Julie McLaren for giving me access to their beautiful collection of artworks that have so inspired me. My thanks also to Paula Nicholson and Ellen Becker from the Ballarat Mechanics Institute for giving me a personal guided tour of the Von Mueller Herbarium. It is a pleasure and an honour to be invited by the Art Gallery of Ballarat and Susan Nedicott to say a few words about her exhibition, An Ornamental Education. I thank Julie for her warm welcome and acknowledge that we are on the unceded land of the Wadawurrung and pay respect to our ancestors past, present and emerging. Recently, I had the privilege of being present at the opening of Layers of Black here at the Art Gallery of Ballarat, where Wadawurrung, excuse me, Elder Dr. Diane Bilson welcomed us. She graciously offered respect tonight as she did the other day, not only to all Aboriginal ancestors, but extended that respect to all our ancestors. In the work of Susan Nethercote, we see a similar respect being offered to the past where she has undertaken a personal and cultural journey into history with curiosity, tenderness and empathy. Sousa's work is located in the past and echoes of the present. She sees lineage and inheritance. She embraces the serendipitous moment, perhaps most elegantly encountered in the fluttering of a pressed botanical specimen from a century old Louisa Ann Meredith book at the State Library. The past preserved in a gesture by a collector that then produces a way of thinking pursues where she embraces that preserved moment and then extends upon it in her painting practice. Sousa's work is deeply connected to her locality, to Ballarat, to consciously being present here and to the present moment in the context of the past. She asks questions about the legacy of image making, specifically his botanical illustration in which she locates her practice and finds an invisible army of 225 19th century middle and upper class women to which science will always be indebted. The Ballarat Mechanics Institute holds three volumes of plant specimens, herbariums, compiled by Baron Sir Ferdinand von Mueller, the first government botanist for the colony of Victoria. Mueller found an adept and engaged workforce, the 225 colonial women, resourcefully employing society's acceptance of women's interest in botany to make his network of collectors as large as possible. Botanical illustration was considered a very appropriate pastime for the 19th century genteel lady, and an interest in botany was included as an extension of this ladylike pursuit. The thing is, 
but it was more than just painting decorative flowers. It was pushing the boundaries of what was possible for women and achieving significant firsts for female botanists and artists. In an ornamental education, Suze is bringing into her work an understanding of her place within a specific tradition. She consciously probes us to look critically at the work of women artists of the 19th century and to know that their work was absolutely radical. In finding ways to engage in critical thought, scientific exploration, botanical image making, these women were able to take their privilege, and that is exactly what it was as middle and upper class women with time and education, to enter worlds previously uninhabitable. The importance of the amateur, the word itself coming from the Latin amato, lover, is of significance. These women were able to use their amateur status to pursue nationally and internationally significant work, all in the guise of the amateur. In this exhibition, Suze brings the work of botanical artists of the past, including Louisa Ann Mer Meredith, into the current discourse. In our time of Know My Name, that seeks to bring into the forefront the work of women artists previously relegated to a footnote or a byline, Suze's work is not merely homage, but rather presents a dialogue, a question, a conversation that uses the medium of painting itself as a language. Suze's paintings feature European flowers. These were a language themselves for colonial women who brought seeds and cuttings from their homelands and cultivated them in their new home. These flowers traverse time and in Suze's work they are shifting, falling through space and their actions that are a reminder of what they are not. Suze explores a space where historical duplication process, processes were constrained by the parameters of material and media and the limited range of pigments available in the colonial period contributed layers of ambiguity and uncertainty to the rendering of botanical imagery. An element that particularly intrigues me in an ornamental education is the shadow. Sometimes it's the presence of the shadow itself that offers a sense of time, acting as a timepiece, holding an ambiguous moment. And then there's the absence of shadow which suggests a different type of time one where time could be timeless, where image and memory, production and reproduction are halted. On International Women's Day, it is a pleasure to be able to take a moment to honour the women of the past who valiantly fought for the rights of women and to frame this moment. And I just ask you all to just take a second for what has been achieved today, right now. Here we are at the Art Gallery of Ballarat. Director is Louise Tegert. Curator, Julian Clark. Here we are at Susan Nethercote's <laughs> exhibition. A body of work reflecting upon the marginalised work of women artists. It's a great moment. <laughs> really is. A lot has led to this moment. It is a pleasure to be here today, Suze, and personally congratulate her on her exhibition and the ornamental education and encourage everyone here to take some time with the ex exhibition tonight and if you can, come back another time to enjoy the work again. Thank you. Thank you.